Hi, I'm Mishti Max, and this is me getting ready for the Yngwie J. Malmsteen gig and meet and greet. And for those who don't know who that is, he is a solo guitarist with a classical influence, giving rise to hard rock songs, ballads, and anything in between. So that's why I added some music notation embellishments to my cheek. However, my main inspiration for all that red in my makeup was my outfit. This completely nutty out there number that I like to put together when extravagance, presence and only the snootiness of a 17th century baroque classical composer will do. First I prepared my lips with bepanthan ointment, letting that soak in while I do my makeup. Then I primed my eyes with MAC Painterly Paint Pot, applying it to my brow bone and inner socket with a Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush, also tapping that in and smoothing some under my lower lash line too. For the actual lid, I used Urban Decay Primer Potion in Sin, blending that with my finger up to my crease. Next I applied the Makeup Geek Gel Eyeliner in Poison to the inner and outer thirds of my lid using my finger, blending that with the Makeup Geek Outer V Brush to fade out the edge of that coloured base, smudging it into the crease and also whipping out my finger for the occasional buff too. Then a dark base for the metallic shadow to come. I pulled out Urban Decay 24-7 pencil in Bourbon and drew that all over the center of my lid between the red sections. I smoothed that out with my finger, blending it in with the red for a good transition across the lid. I got the Urban Decay Naked palette and with this Sedona Lace EB09 brush took the shadow naked and ran it through my crease as a transition shade. I went back to the Naked palette and took Buck using the same brush to really jam that into my crease to deepen it up. Then to the Inglot Rainbow Shadow in number 101R and the Sigma E70 medium angled brush used to apply the lightest of the brown shades as a matte skin toned brow highlight. Next for the Sugar Pill Chromalast Pigment in Asylum, a metallic red which I used wet by adding a drop of the Illamasqua Sealing Gel and mixed that up into a shimmery red paste in the cap and applied it with the small end of the Naked 3 brush over the red base up to the crease, avoiding the center of the lid. Then I went back to the Makeup Geek Out of E brush and proceeded to blend the top of that out and buff it inwards. I grabbed the Sigma E36 blending brush and began to blur the edge of the red pigment before it dried and then took some dry pigment to blur it some more up into the crease and remove the harsh line. Then I went to the Urban Decay Electric palette to get one of my favorite shadows from it called Slow Burn and I eased the transition into the crease further using the same tiny blending brush. For the center, I took out the Sugar Pill Loose Pigment in Penelope and went about the same method as with the red pigment, but used the Sigma E57 Firm Shader and painted the chunky copper pigment over the remaining space of the lid, taking it up into the crease as well. I also used the stiff brush with the red pigment to blend and tapped each of the brushes over the line where the colors meet to blur the seam and I added a bit more red pigment to help. I also worked on the crease, bringing the copper up further, blending the edge out with the Makeup Geek Out of E brush and taking out the fluffy blending brush with the residual transition shade on it to totally soften out the edge. For a bit of fun, I took the Sugar Pill Sparkle Baby palette and went for the Kitten Parade shadow to add some coral golden shimmer to the edge of the crease shade using the tiny blending brush just because I thought it looked pretty. I brightened up the brow bone with the Inglot shadow to dampen down the crease as well. Back to the Naked palette and the Shadow Dark Horse to give some darkness to the outer edge of my eye using the Sigma E47 Shader Crease Brush. So I can get some definition in the outer C as they call it and I buffed it out into the red with the soft brush too. The Urban Decay Pencil in Bourbon came back for a second appearance and I ran that along my lash line. Then I took the Sigma E65 angled brush to smudge that out and went back into Dark Horse to set the pencil and give it a fuzzy appearance. Also using that pointed blending brush and merging it into the crease using the blending brushes and intensifying the red and coral shades and getting everything smooth all around the eyeshadow. I used makeup remover on a cotton bud to clean off the tear duct area and remove any red and cleaned under my eyes as well with a makeup wipe. Then I took the MAC pigment in vanilla on the Sigma E56 inner corner shader and I generously applied the golden pink reflective pigment over my tear duct and blended that towards the lid, along the lower lash line and also up into the inner crease. I applied the Rimmel Scandalized pencil in nude to my waterline to open up the eyes and then I blended the product into my lash line with a cotton bud to remove the excess pencil that gets caught on my lashes. Next I went back to the Urban Decay pencil in bourbon and ran that along my lower lash line but avoiding the inner corner and I used the same little angled brush to smudge it into the lash line, smooth it along and blend it out to soften the lower edge. Then I rubbed the pencil on the tip of the brush so I could draw a line out from the lashes creating an open tear duct. I started from the end point and brought it in towards the lash line using the angle of the brush to direct the shape and stretching the skin towards my nose to make it easier. You can also clean it up with cotton buds if you make the line too thick or don't like the shape. 
I opened up the Sugar Pill Penelope pigment again and using the Illamasqua mixing medium and the tiny end of the electric brush, I painted on the coppery paste to the center of my lash line, mirroring the upper lid. Then back to the Sugar Pill Asylum and I did the same thing using the naked brush from before and applied the metallic pigment to the outer and inner thirds of my lash line. I blended those colors overlapping the copper pigment on the edges of the red and then decided to take the metallic red over the brown pencil creating a funky open tear duct and I think it gave a kind of cool weird effect and worked pretty well for the first time I've tried it like this. Then I darkened up the outer edge with more dark horse using the angled brush and brought that up into the outer crease using the pointed tiny blending brush for cohesion. I curled my lashes a buttload to give them a lot of lift and I went on to the mascara. However, since there is a massive applicator on this Maybelline mascara, I dipped my CoverGirl brush into the Maybelline tube and applied that to my lashes as I did in my previous video. And I also did my bottom lashes too, avoiding the very inner ones. Going on to moisturizer, I took Embryolis Lait Creme Concentrate and applied that with my fingers to prepare my skin. While I waited for that to soak in, I did my brows with Benefit Browsing in light, using a wax side to fill in the sparse areas and setting it with the powder, not doing anything fancy as I like and natural brow. And I set the hairs in place with Benefit Gimme Brow in light. I primed my face with Benefit Porefessional. Next I sprayed my face generously with MAC Fix Plus and I tapped my synthetic flat kabuki brush from Sedona Lace over my face to press in the moisture and coat the brush with the excess. Then I used my usual bourgeois foundation coating the brush on the back of my hand and using downward strokes to avoid excess peach fuzz appearance. I dampened the Real Technique sponge with MAC Fix Plus, then used my fingers to add MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC15 under my eyes and the center of my face, and blended in my concealer using patting motions with the sponge to merge the product into my skin, taking the pointed side for under the eyes. To set that, I picked up some Purely Cosmetics Diamond Perfect Finish Loose Powder with the damp sponge and pressed that into my skin. Then I knocked off any excess powder with the Real Technique Setting Brush and a Sigma Large Fluffy Brush. I darkened my beauty spot using the wax from the brow kit, patting it into the skin. For a matte warm toned cheek, I took MAC Surf Baby Collection Blush in the shade My Paradise and applied it from the apples of my cheeks to my hairline with the Napoleon Paradis 20B Reflective Contour Brush. And I blended that into the skin with a Sedona Lace Kabuki Brush to soften it. Then I sketched out the treble clef and base clef design on my cheek using the darkest brown shade in the Inglot 101 R eyeshadow and the Sigma E11 eyeliner brush. I wanted to do a practice run with the brown shadow because I knew it was going to be difficult to draw and I didn't want to go in with a pigment without a guide. Plus a lighter color is easier to rub off if you make a mistake. Next I went in with Penelope again making a liquid eyeliner with the Illamasqua Sealing Gel and I used the same eyeliner brush to go over my sketch and refine the shape. I think it would have been even better if I did some shading next to the cliffs. But let me tell you it was incredibly hard to draw a decent design backwards on the side of my face looking at a reversed image in the mirror. It took me a few tries because I wanted the treble and bass clefts to be the right way around for an onlooker's viewpoint, so I had to draw them backwards on my cheek. Also if you have someone to help you with the correct perspective, it is easier but still a bit confusing. Cotton buds can help with refinement even at the final stage, and there we go! I think it's pretty good and it gets across the music inspiration. Then I removed any foundation or lip balm off my lips with Garnier Micellar Cleansing Solution and a cotton bud. I then primed with MAC Prep and Prime Lip Base to prevent feathering and keep my lips on for longer. And I took the MAC Lip Pencil in Cherry to line and fill in my lips completely for a nice red base to keep my lips looking their best all night. Once I was done with that, I went for this Chanel lipstick with the fancy and fun packaging that opens with a button press. And this one is the Rouge Alou Velvet Lipstick in number 38, Love Fascinate. It's a deeper red shade and I applied that straight from the bullet onto my lips. I removed the excess product from the center of my lips with a cotton bud. And I practically took a bath in the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray, complete with the usual headbang into the mist so none is wasted and my face stays put. After fanning that dry, my classical music face for the Yngwie Malmsteen gig is complete. I was happy with how this look came out. I decided to go with the round shape but added the open tear duct and music details on my cheek to amp up the wackiness. The red and copper shimmery shadows blended perfectly together. I really wanted to wear the Sugar Pill Penelope pigment because it's just so awesome with its chunky coppery shimmeriness and with all that red it looked really cool and fiery. Plus it's interesting to use brown for once and not go all the way into black for something different. For the outfit, since Mr. Malmsteen's inspiration for his music is of a classical genre, I couldn't help but wear my red crushed velvet jacket complete with tails. It's from a little boutique called Anton's. I absolutely adore its ridiculousness and complete ostentatiousness. 
I delight in flipping out my tails like a classical conductor because it is just so fun. I love the way the jacket drapes angling down the side of the body and I thought it would go really well with this asymmetric red skirt from Romwe.com. I added a little fur necked and lace edged cardigan to increase the opulence and warmth and it was perfect the way the lace hangs out the sleeves giving it an old world touch. And to top it all off, quite literally, I added my micro hat with its many feathers and ribbons plus lace and much much more. It's so much condensed awesome in such a little hat. I finished with opaque black stockings and black leather knee high boots. I really had a blast at the gig with my perfect front row spot and even after some technical difficulties with the equipment at the start, Ingve Malmsteen performed the best gig I've seen him and absolutely blew us away with an awesome show. Plus the cherry on the top was meeting Ingve Malmsteen and rocking a fantastic photo. Or as I say, having him meet me. Between my outfit and my awesome little hat, I left quite an impression. The weirdest thing happened after the gig when the keyboardist slash singer said to me, ah, so you're the girl in the red dress. I don't know what went on backstage, but it seems I was quite memorable from the meet and greet and the information was shared with the rest of the band. I also got some stuff signed, which was pretty cool. And I got this slogan, which is kind of based off one of his songs. And it got quite the smirk when I requested it. We also got a t-shirt and all these other little bits from the Diamond Pass. I also got to grab a couple of the many pics that were flung off stage. And now you can enjoy some of the footage from the gig. Watching. I hope you enjoyed this get ready with me for a gig music inspired makeup tutorial and don't forget to subscribe for more videos also check out my band and podcast on iTunes click the little boxes if you want to see other tutorials of mine